mysteries surround the Earth. Some are quite interesting and based on actual facts, while some are more made-up theories. What really excites the most adventurous people are the truly hidden places that are spread all across the globe. When you're in the vaults, politics don't matter. What matters is keeping the seeds safe. The mystery and beauty of these unique places are not all science fiction, though. Most of these iconic places can be explained through either science or history. The one thing they all have in common is this. 15 most secret places that are absolutely off limits. <laughs> Discovery Island This island has a long history going as far as the early 1900s, when the island was called Raz Island. Located in the middle of Bay Lake, the island is known today as Discovery Island. It's owned by Walt Disney World in Orlando, Florida and purchased in 1965. It remained undeveloped until 1974. Developers added nearly 15,000 cubic yards of soil, increasing the island to 11 acres. Over a thousand tons of boulders and trees were exported from other countries such as China, South Africa, and the Himalayas to be used in creating an entirely new landscape for Disney's new attraction. In 1978, Disney renamed the park Discovery Island. It was then the theme park's conservation efforts that were recognized. In 1981, it was made an accredited zoological park by the American Association of Zoological Parks and Aquariums. But that didn't last long. By 1989, a large number of allegations emerged about the park that included the mishandling of vultures and other wild birds, the destruction of birds' nests, and the shooting of hawks and falcons. Even though it was a major blow to Disney's public reputation, they were able to keep the park open in a respectable manner. But Disney eventually decided to close the park. In 1999, 25 years after the park had opened, Discovery Island closed. The park remains that way to this day. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. We have all seen those science fiction movies where there's a laboratory that's storing an army of clones. It's usually a part of some diabolical plot. Or there's an arsenal of pods with humans in hypersleep on a mission to another planet to populate a new world. Whatever the occasion, scenes like this in the movies usually end badly. Whether it's The Matrix or Aliens, nothing good will come from this on screen. But it's often these very movies that plant the seeds for actual science. Repopulating another planet might actually become a thing, and we'd have to safely get huge amounts of people off Earth somehow. Maybe this would be the way. Or maybe these floating beings aren't even fully human. On a course to arrive and destroy our planet, what do you think? Either option would make for a great movie, right? Use the hashtag missing topic with your comments below. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? The Tunnel to Hell Rumors and stories abound of this location situated along High Street in Columbus, Ohio. Is there anyone who can resist an offer to explore a so-called tunnel to hell? The east end of the tunnel is kept obstruction-free by a wicked gate of rusted metal that extends from each side of the opening, tapering to a gap barely big enough to squeeze through. But the gate occupies a huge concrete basin with steep angled sides that make it a favorite secluded hangout. The small runoff stream that it accommodates is dry most of the time, but when it runs, it roars through the concrete bore often as sudden as a flash flood. The rusty obstruction, sudden rushes of water, and reputed tendency of dead bodies to wash up along with other debris inspired the skaters to give the tunnel to hell its other common name, the Blood Bowl. And people have spray painted the tunnel inside and out. There's a popular legend circulating through the world claiming that there are secret gates of the hell hidden away. It's said that a special ritual must be performed in order to open each of these gates. The story concerning Columbus's gate, however, is different from the popular Gate of Hell stories. In fact, there really isn't any backstory to this location. It appears that it is the case of the Columbus Tunnel to Hell is merely just a name. <laughs> Woomera Test Range the world's largest military land base is in South Australia, where it was established in 1947, not at the behest of the Australian military, but of the British. Atomic bombs, ballistic missiles, and boosters for satellites have all been tested at the Woomera Range since it opened. At 49,000 square miles, the range is still active today for the testing of drones, 
ground-based weapon systems and explosives, but it doesn't provide the light show or rocket debris it once did. And recently, the US and Australian militaries successfully tested a hypersonic glider. However, much of the arid and flat land is leased to mining companies or farmers to run either cattle or sheep, so there are people living on the rocket range. The ranchers have been in the area for decades, some even longer than the test range. Locals are still finding bits and pieces of rockets, satellites, and weather balloons from those early tests. In fact, the William Creek Hotel has the best display of military and space junk found in the area. There's a village of Womera too, which is the traditional gateway to the test range. It's the only part of the range open to tourists without permits and has places set up to learn about the history of the area. <laughs> Barra Beach The wide shallow bay near Barra's northern tip in Scotland was famous primarily for its cockles until aircraft started to use the beach in 1933. It's home to one of the world's most spectacular and most beautiful airports, and it goes back almost a century. Scheduled air services to and from Barra Airport began in 1936, and today it's the only beach airport anywhere in the world to be used for scheduled airline services. Three runways are designated on the beach. Facilities include modern emergency services, though the airport fire crews are called out far more frequently to help stranded dolphins or seals than for any reason connected with the aircraft operations. This too must make the airport quite unique. Barra Airport is 116 nautical miles from Avernus, 140 nautical miles from Glasgow, and 75 nautical miles from the Scottish mainland. An average of 8,500 passengers per year use the airport, and there are more than 1,400 aircraft movements, landings, or takeoffs per year. So you might want to think twice before lying on this beach because it will drastically increase your chances of being hit by an airplane. Flying into or out of Barra can seem a great adventure but the airport is subject to the same safety rules as any other flight facility. <laughs> Menwith Hill The Royal Air Force Menwith Hill in North Yorkshire, England provides communications and intelligence support services. The base was established in the 1950s to intercept communications meant for the Soviet Union and communist Eastern European countries. Today, it forms part of the NSA's global surveillance network intercepting phone calls, emails, and other electronic communications around the world. But it also contains an extensive satellite ground station and is a communication intercept and missile warning site. It's been described as the largest electronic monitoring station in the world. These domes, which protect radar antennas from the elements, are often known as the golf balls. But did you know? Hundreds of personnel from a number of international intelligence bodies, including staff from the UK and the USA, work inside these secretive bubbles. According to officials, these golf balls are actually a global listening post created during the Cold War, so the USA and the UK could spy on the Russians. And according to stories surrounding the unusual spot, these antennas could zoom into any conversation on the planet. And that's why it's a hot spot for protesters and conspiracy theorists for that reason. What else could be happening here? <laughs> Plymouth Volcano Dormant for hundreds of years, this volcano in the Caribbean woke up in 1995. A series of eruptions followed, burying streets and buildings around the island, submerging the capital like a modern-day Pompeii. This volcano eruption devastated two-thirds of the British overseas territory, which now looks like a barren lunar landscape. And unfortunately, the volcano is expected to have a serious eruption again in the future. Meanwhile, ash eruptions are still a regular occurrence. Constructed on historical lava deposits near the then long inactive volcano, the town was evacuated when the volcano resumed erupting. Plymouth was eventually abandoned permanently in 1997 after it was substantially burnt and mostly buried by a series of lava flows. The entire southern part of the island was abandoned and an exclusion zone was created around the volcano, meaning travel to the south was restricted. Although completely abandoned, Plymouth is still classified as the capital and therefore is the world's only ghost town capital of any political territory. Still, this volcanic island's population has grown to nearly 5,000 people since the eruption, mostly due to an influx of immigrants seeking world and tourists looking to explore the ruins. <laughs> Maya Bay One of the world's most popular beaches was made famous by the 2000 film The Beach, starring Leonardo DiCaprio. 
It tells the story of a backpacker's search for a legendary beach untouched by tourism. Obviously, that did not last. Maya Beach has closed indefinitely. The golden sands and crystal blue water ringed by cliffs have become one of Thailand's most visited tourist destinations since it shot to fame as the movie's location. But unfortunately, the small beach has sustained extensive environmental damage in recent years, receiving up to 5,000 tourists and 200 boats a day. So, Thai authorities announced they would be closing the bay due to the extent of the destruction caused by the thousands of day trippers. Thanks to the pollution from litter, boats, and sun cream, it's estimated that more than 80% of the coral around Maya Bay has been destroyed. Despite evidence of the mounting damage for years, Thai authorities have been reluctant to shut it down because the location generates millions of dollars in revenue a year. However, Thailand's authorities announced the restrictions on tourism would not be lifted until the ecosystem fully recovers to a normal situation. Good idea. Google Data Center Google has its data centers in four continents, North America, South America, Asia, and Europe. And these centers are the facilities where Google stores and processes all its data. They're high security zones and are completely off limits to visitors to protect against any kind of data breach. The facilities combine large drives, computer nodes organized in aisles of racks, internal and external networking, environmental controls, and operation software. So entering the building, not just the floor, requires that you're authorized. That includes going through a security checkpoint. In the secure perimeter, Google can see where you are via cameras, including thermal cameras with overlapping fields of view around the facility. Google can track where a person has been in the facility as well. For those wondering what prevents someone from walking out with drives inside from cameras, there are features such as security and metal detectors for leaving the Google data center so someone does not remove hardware without authorization. And that's not all, there's no official data on how many servers are in Google data centers, but a 2016 report stated that Google at the time had 2.5 million servers. This number is changing as the company expands capacity and refreshes its hardware. <laughs> Global Seed Vault Ever heard of a seed bank? Simply put, it's the ultimate insurance policy for the world's food supply. It gives options for future generations to manage the challenges of a changing climate and population growth. It's not coal or precious minerals like diamonds or gold, but just seeds. Located in the Arctic Circle on an icy mountain between Norway and the North Pole stands a resource designed to secure our future on Earth, the Global Seed Vault. The facility serves a humanitarian purpose and is part of the International System for Conserving Plant Genetic Diversity. Millions of tiny seeds from more than a million varieties of food crops are stored there on the Norwegian island of Spitsbergen. It's a long-term storage facility like the huge safety deposit box built to stand the test of time. Worldwide, many seed banks like this one exist. However, many of these are vulnerable, exposed to natural catastrophes and border conflicts. On top of that, something like a broken fridge can destroy an entire seed collection. That won't happen here. It isn't simply just a large storage facility for seeds from around the world. The vault is protecting the world's agricultural genetic diversity and protecting our future in case of catastrophe. The global seed vault will secure for centuries millions of seeds. Mount Weather Located in the Blue Ridge Mountains, this facility is located 51 miles west of Washington, D.C., and its existence has always been kind of hush-hush. But Mount Weather actually exists. It's a major site for the highest level civilian and military official in case of a national emergency. It's a 564-acre, high-security federal government facility. Built during the 1950s, the facility consists of two parts, the above-ground complex and the 600,000-square-foot underground facility. This underground bunker includes a hospital, crematorium, dining and recreation areas, sleeping quarters, reservoirs of drinking and cooling water, an emergency power plant, and a radio and television studio. The facility might be able to accommodate about 2,000 people, but only the president, the cabinet, and Supreme Court are provided private sleeping quarters. And for years, very few people knew it existed. Mount Weather's existence remained a secret to all but top federal officials till a plane crashed in 1974 in close proximity to the site. But even then, federal officials guarded the areas, not allowing any pictures of the site. The cameramen were not even allowed near the smoking debris of the crash that claimed 90 lives. Today, it has its own leaders, its own police and fire departments, and even its own laws. Club 33 They don't call it the happiest place on earth for nothing, 
And right here at New Orleans Square in Disneyland is the most exclusive club in California, Club 33. It was cool for the rich and famous to hang out. Plus, it was, after all, one of two locations within Disneyland Park to offer booze. Disneyland opened Club 33 in 1967, the year after the company's founder Walt Disney died, and it's a members-only dining experience for the uber-rich. We're talking very exclusive clientele and a steep price per year to soak it all in. According to one Club 33 member, there's a $25,000 to $100,000 initiation fee and up to $30,000 in annual fees, depending on the level of membership. The venue is lavishly decorated and props from Disney films featured throughout, including a table from Mary Poppins and moving images from the Haunted Mansion ride. Inside the secret club, there are also amazing accommodation facilities. The Disneyland Dream Suite is a 2,200-square-foot luxury apartment that sits above the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Members of the club get other perks as well, including a fast track for long lines, a Disney concierge, as well as free parking. Some of its supposed members include Elton John, Elizabeth Taylor, Tom Hanks, and Christina Aguilera. Pine Gap This top-secret place is called Pine Gap, and that's the commonly used name for this satellite surveillance base in the Northern Territory in the center of Australia. High levels of secrecy have existed in the operation since day one, and it's continued for decades. The site is dominated by large golf balls, array domes which conceal and protect satellite dishes. They are believed to control spy satellites about 50,000 feet above the Earth. From the base, authorities control satellites that gather information used to pinpoint airstrikes around the world and target nuclear weapons, among other military and intelligence tasks. The base's eavesdropping technology also enables spies to monitor phone conversations from all around the world as well. Born at the height of the Cold War, this place was presented to the public in 1966 as a space research facility. Australian governments were even shielded from what actually goes on there. Even former prime ministers were left in the dark on some matters. As a result, the facility dotted with satellite dishes and isolated in the desert has become a magnet for anti-war protesters and alien enthusiasts who regularly show up to stir up controversy. It's known as Australia's Area 51. <laughs> Monkey Island As far as unique destinations go, few places have Morgan Island beat. But don't get your hopes up of lounging on the sand. This island strictly belongs to the monkeys, more than 4,000 of them. Tucked away in the St. Helena Sound off the coast of South Carolina in the United States, it's made up of more than 2,000 acres of pristine land and, oddly, a whole lot of non-native primates. So how on earth did a colony of monkeys make it to an island off the coast of South Carolina? These sand-colored primates are native to forests in northern India, Nepal, eastern and southern China, and northern Southeast Asia. In the summer of 1979, 1,400 monkeys were placed on the island to use as research animals. Since then, their population has boomed to about 4,000. It was all part of a plan by the U.S. government to establish a self-sufficient breeding program, and Morgan Island was the perfect home. Humans aren't allowed on the island. However, that doesn't mean you can't see them at all. There are boat trips around the island, and when you cruise the coast, you can spot a monkey or two hanging out in the distance. Now the island is both owned and managed by a state-owned conservation organization, and the monkeys are protected under federal law. <laughs> Vatican Archives These top-secret archives are not public and were once only accessible to scholars once they reached 75 years old. It has 53 miles of shelving. 35,000 volumes of catalog and 12 centuries worth of documents. It's all housed in one of the most iconic bastions of religion and culture ever, the Vatican's secret archives. Until 1881, not even scholars of Christianity were permitted access to the archive. That's when Pope Leo XIII opened the trove to researchers. As far as the general public knows, the archives contain historical documents, including original letters written by Michelangelo, documents relating to expenditure, correspondence, and even an entreaty written on birch bark by a Canadian indigenous tribe in 1887. Little do we know, however, that beyond the walls lies thousands of magical texts pertaining to the existence of magic and demons. Yet, in reality, this place isn't that secret. The archives were, and still are, designed to house official paperwork along with correspondence and other information, plus impressive treasures and art. Still. 
conspiracy theories abound over its contents, like wacky speculation that the Vatican is hiding extraterrestrials being inside. Some people speculate that the archives are controlled by secret societies. The Terracotta Army The story goes like this. A famous Chinese emperor took the throne in 246 BC at the age of 13. Within 20 years, he had unified several warring kingdoms. To commemorate this, he ordered a tomb's construction shortly after taking the throne. More than 700,000 laborers worked on the project that involved a huge terracotta army. Fast forward 1,700 plus years, in 1974, farmers digging a well stumbled upon fragments of a life-size clay figure crafted in the shape of a battle-ready soldier and further excavations revealed this stunning, iconic archaeological discovery. The emperor's tomb had endured all these years. The Terracotta Army, as it's known, is part of an elaborate mausoleum, or tomb, created to accompany the emperor of China into the afterlife, according to archaeologists. After the tomb was discovered, the site became a museum and a world heritage site in 1987 for people worldwide to enjoy. To date, almost four pits have been partially excavated. Three are filled with the terracotta soldiers, horse-drawn chariots, weapons, and include a mix of cavalry, armored soldiers, and archers. But what about that fourth unfinished pit? Apparently, archaeologists suspect that the unexcavated tomb could contain an entire replica of an ancient city. Impressive, to say the least. Since it's almost impossible to even reach most of these places, these videos make them a little less off-limits. We want to visit even more now. Stick around for more great videos and like and subscribe while you're here. Mm -hmm.